Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south, more specifically at Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and even more specifically than that, we are in front of the Grand Majestic Theater. There's several different shows that play here at the Grand Majestic, but we are here today to see Terry Evanswood, the preeminent magician here in the Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg area. I've actually been invited out here by Terry himself. I wanted to check out his show. And then after that, Terry was gonna take me over to a new attraction he is working on, the Evanswood Magic Mansion, which I'm super excited to see. So please, follow me. Hey you all, Terry Bagger here, uh, coming to you live from the south, and more specifically Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Even more specifically, the Grand Majestic Theater, where I'm performing some magic. Uh, we're going to show you some clips. Hope you have fun. The star of magic. made of fine-tempered steel. The last 10 seconds out loud. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I attempt to escape my reality, I hope you've escaped yours. You have to keep... And we have landed at the Evanswood Magic Mansion. Now this will be an attraction opening to the public on July 4th of this year, but uh, Terry has agreed to give me a sneak peek, a sneak tour of this house as a collection that he has been amassing his entire life through his travels, through his work in the magic industry. And uh, I'm just excited to take you guys along and have a look at this. So, please, follow me. So the attraction lies inside this mansion, originally built in the 1840s. I believe this is the oldest structure in Sevier County. All right, so, heading inside. Big knocker there. <laughs> it's the carpet bag. Hey! At Magic Mansion. Welcome. Come on Glad in. Glad to be here. Glad to have you here. We uh, all right. have all kinds of surprises to show you and your YouTube friends. So my name is Terry Evanswood and four years ago I acquired the oldest house in the county, 1840. It was originally 400 acres of uh, plantation and we've been slowly restoring this to make a public house tour to show not only the history of the house, but some of the entertainment things. 
I was fortunate to find a uh, original recording of Edison's voice. This is Thomas Edison here, of course, that uh, takes credit for creating the light bulb. That's a debate between Tesla. <laughs> but uh, um, Edison recorded his own voice on the cylinder along with P.T. Barnum, Harry Houdini, some oh my of my idols. So this is a recording of Edison. So it's a player piano. And what's incredible about this, 1923 electric was pretty new in some homes. It's a, a vacuum system that runs the, uh, the, the uh, player. What you're going to hear is exactly, not almost or quite, but exactly what Liberace recorded at the company. <laughs> buckle and the most priceless thing to me is that bullet sitting there that is the bullet that was found by the third family that lived here lodged in what used to be a staircase where we're standing it was shot during the civil war through the front door oh wow that's the original bullet hole oh wow and it was found at the yep it was found at the right trajectory from down in the road this is the uh the library Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. That was me as Dracula. That was done as a gift from an artist in Aruba. I performed there for a year. That's cool. She put my initials, T-E, in the ring, and the word magic is in the book. Those are all my Alex Jordan books, House on the Rock. Oh, yeah? my favorite place. Mine too. In fact, um, this, the Indonesian dressing screens that are backed with the blue, that was an inspiration from Alex Jordan, House on the Rock. I absolutely definitely see that. Got a little squirrel right there. This is uh, from the tomb of King Not Too Common. You probably recognize the nod there. The white owl and the crystal ball. Those are uh, uh, my, my props from Labyrinth, one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. What do you got down there? Is that a... That is a, uh, a dragon baby. A dragon baby? Yeah. And down below, that's a Loch Ness Monster baby. And oh. some, uh, some genie lamps. So uh, one of my first projects, so I could get my family here for Christmas, was the dining room. So come on in. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Like the Biltmore house? <laughs> oh, that's quite a compliment. I call this the Built Less. Uh, that was not original. I found at a junk shop a pile of old headboards from Disney World. So I cut them up, and if you look closely, that's one face up and one facing down. And these were from Disney World? Yeah. Disney has a lot of auctions. Do you know what, re do you know what resort they were in? I don't know. And this is the original um, railing from the stagecoach stop that is halfway between this house and Knoxville. And then over here, this is a collection of antique tin, plate, and uh, cardboard boxes and packaging that all have the word magic or presto in some way. <laughs> in my search for antique magic memorabilia, which we'll see in a little while, uh, I've been fortunate to find all kinds of packages. This is so cool, the magic baking powder. Now upstairs, this is still part of the original house. There's been additions added over the years, um, but this is all original. There's two rooms up here that I love. This is my tribute to P.T. Barnum. Uh, of course, you all know The Greatest Showman. Uh, this was inspired by visits to Greenfield Village at the Henry Ford Museum, which I highly recommend. So it's kind of like walking back in time. So all the, uh, the wallpaper is all original. 
This is a hand-painted Victorian bed that I was fortunate to find that was already the color of the room. Oh, wow. Even the paintings of Jenny Lynn were the colors of the room. Jacob, you got to see this. I found this at the garage sale down the street. Isn't Matches that it. funny? It's like crazy how many things have worked out. This came from a garage sale in Sevierville. It's a beautiful uh, pump organ. It still works great. And uh, uh, when I found it, I didn't know where it was going to go until I saw this. Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Bridgeport, Barnum, Connecticut. That's where Barnum is from. Yeah, Barnum was mayor of Bridgeport. Uh, this is an original autograph of P.T. Barnum, which uh, states Bridgeport. Wow. So it was so amazing when I found this and thinking that's incredible. <laughs> is the Titanic. You've been to the Titanic Museum. Yes. I think you did a section on that. So uh, this is the Titanic Suite. Oh, wow. Over the bed is a half-scale replica of the clock that was on the uh, staircase of the Titanic. I have it purposely stopped at 217. That would have been the time that the clock would have stopped. This is a picture of Eleanor Schumann and I. She was the last American survivor of the Titanic. She actually lived in my hometown of St. Charles, Illinois, about 40 miles west of Chicago. Let me get some more light on this. That is a badge of courage from an uh, officer on the Carpathia, which was the ship that picked up the survivors. Yeah. This is a piece of coal from the wreckage of the ship. This is a ring that went down on the Titanic. Oh, wow. James Cameron's Titanic that was worn by Rose's mother <laughs> in the movie. Uh, that's a White Star fish knife, and this is the treasure. A friend of mine who plays Captain Smith, Lloyd, Lloyd Lytle, on our Titanic exhibit here in Pigeon Forge, actually went on an exhibition with Robert Ballard. They brought up a complete state window and pieces broke off and he brought one for me that's an actual oh, wow. piece of the Titanic. That's crazy. You know what a dime museum is? Yeah. That was one of, uh, one of the great entertainments back in the day. Oh, so wow. what I'm creating here is kind of what I would refer to as a dime museum. Um, uh, you know, like mechanical automatons, wax figures, um, just unusual things. So we'll, uh, we'll start here. This is Mary Pickford, who was the first silent movie star, along with Charlie Chaplin, and these are earrings that belong to her. Liberace and a feather from his costume from Radio City Music Hall. Siegfried and Roy, who were fantastic, $50 million a year contract, highest paid entertainers in history. There's a rhinestone from one of the costumes in their show. Loretta Lynn, I opened for at a few county fairs. Oh, cool. Uh, doing the magic act. And she gave me a piece of coal from her personal coal mine. Wow. Dolly Parton, of course. And that's carpet from her bedroom. And down below, you remember Louise Mandrell was here in Pigeon Forge yeah. for quite a while. She did a magic act in the show, and she gave me the shoes she wore during the magic act. This is Hollywood, the white tiger that was in our show about a decade ago. He got in a fight with his cage one night, and uh, in the cage one, he broke his, his tooth. tooth. Yeah, that's oh. a white tiger tooth. Barbara Eden, of course, I Dream a Genie, a reproduction bottle that she signed. And then this is pretty neat. Uh, of course, Marilyn Monroe and uh, Jane Russell. These are shoes that belong to Marilyn Monroe that she wore with that outfit. And that's a hat from Jane Russell. This is a piece of carpet from Elvis's bedroom. Oh, wow. And this is one of my pride and joys. This is an autograph of Charlie Chaplin, who of course is one of my, one of my heroes being in the entertainment business. So around this side, uh, these are some mechanical figures that actually were originally in uh, a place called Fabulous Fairyland, which was the first roadside attraction here in Pigeon Forge. I made him into a magician. <laughs> it's a free magic exhibit. Farrah Fawcett, one of Charlie's original angels. This uh, outfit that belonged to her, all the jewelry, a wax figure that originally was in the first wax museum in Gatlinburg. And uh, this is a hairbrush that belonged to her. 
It's my friend Mike, who is Farrah Fawcett fanatic. Uh, he has over 3,000 pictures of Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> so is this the wax museum that was that now is Ripley's Super Fun Zone? Exactly. It was Cooter's? Yep. Okay. Right as you're coming in, yeah. Gatlinburg on the left. This is so cool. A friend of mine, Steve Foster, who's just a genius mechanical wizard, came up with this little marble. And you stick the marble to the back wall, and the magician does his trick. So if you watch the little marble in here... You see, can you see it in yeah. there? It made the marble large. Isn't that wild? <laughs> this is a levitation. Nope. This uh, is an incredible story. The wax head I found uh, on an auction and it turns out that it is actually the original Judas from the Last Supper scene at uh, Christ Museum in the Smokies. Wow. Jenny Lind, uh, the famous uh, Swedish Nightingale arms success story. It was really because of Jenny Lind and the success of her that the finances were available to fund the Three Ring Circus. Can you do a magic trick with me? Sure. Okay, so all the cards are different. Okay. It's a regular deck of cards. I'm just going to have you reach inside the deck and take any card that you'd like. Just take one. Don't let me see it. You just look at it. Make okay. sure you know what it is. You got it? Got it. You show the at-home viewers? I show the at-home viewers. Okay. I'm not going to find the card the magician is. If you look under hat, there's nothing there. To find your card, he has to have cards. Okay. So we got some cards. Narrow it down to one card. Okay. What was your card? It was the Queen of Hearts. Wow. Dollywood, which was then Silver Dollar City, it started as Rebel Railroad. It was just a railroad. And then it was changed to Gold Rush Junction, where they added a saloon show and other things. And then Silver Dollar City, like Branson, and eventually Dollywood. So the Flooded Mine was my favorite attraction. It was much like Parts of the Caribbean where you float through. And One-Eyed Jack was the escapee. When they tore out the ride, much like Disney tearing out Snow White Scary Adventures, I wasn't really thrilled. I don't like change. So I threw a fit, and to shut me up, they gave me the original Flooded Mine sign, <laughs> which is pictured here. And... Um, and uh, when I jam, oh, wow. here. Oh, it's a fountain. Oh no, the canary just died. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. These are life size ventriloquist figures from my uncle. He was into that kind of thing and very talented and creative. This is a beautiful figure. This is Aladdin. That was originally made by Hills Brothers Coffee Company. He pours liquid. This would sit in the window of a coffee shop. And he'd lift the cup to drink. And his little eyes move in the mouth. And he liked it so much he'd pour another cup. I have to show you the mechanics of this because it's just, it's too much. This is also a Steve Foster oh, wow. creation. So there's one motor turning a cam wheel. Let's get it right in here. So when you start the machine, that cam is moving and moving those little fingerings that control the buttons and switches and strings and magnets. This one is a simpler one that came out of a pet shop window and it's a mechanical bird. He has three different movements. He moves tip side to side, up and down, and the little beak moves. Also an extinct attraction from Dollywood, we have the sign for the Professor's Mansion. And this is a treasure. That little piece of paper is actual piece of wallpaper from uh, the room that Abraham Lincoln died in. Oh, wow. 
And this cabinet card is um, an actual, kind of basically a business card from John Wilkes Booth. I can guarantee you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the hand that pulled the trigger on Abraham Lincoln held that. I don't know if you remember Garfield Goose. Uh, he was a puppet character on the Bozo Circus Show, which I grew up watching. And, I definitely and remember the dog right there. Cuddly Dudley. Cuddly Dudley. You're off to Cuddly Dudley's house. Yes, that was like a local, uh, like a Chicago area yeah. children's show. Yeah. 40 years, and uh, I performed on the Bozo Circus Show about 15 times during my high oh, school. that's years. awesome. It was a great uh, way to get leverage for starting my magic career. So I made it the chapel. Oh, wow. The stained glass windows and the frames around them that would uh, I salvaged from my hometown church when it was being remodeled. So uh, that's important to me. So I just built the frames around the stained glass windows that were also from my hometown. Uh, over here are religious relics that I've collected or have been given to me. Uh, sand from uh, Nazareth and water from the Jordan. And these are uh, chalices that were used in a mass. Uh, this is a crucifix that was blessed by Pope John Paul. These are the three first gifts of Christmas, frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Actually, frankincense from the farm where the frankincense was brought to the manger. This is pretty cool. This is a picture of St. John Bosco, who was the patron saint for magicians. Oh, wow. Yeah, he knew magic tricks and juggling. And uh, this is a little piece of his vestment. Probably the coolest thing in, in the whole house is this. Can you get a close-up of that and look at the center little part of that display? I don't know if you can zoom in. There's a little tiny piece of wood making up a cross. Uh, according to the Vatican, that's an actual piece of wood from the true cross. Oh, wow. That's insane. So, in keeping with the entertainment theme, there's a secret passageway here behind the stained glass Oh. This is coming soon. This coming is soon? A, yeah, a life-size diorama of Snow White. Snow White was the movie that that really made it. Everyone told Disney that it would never make it, that it was gonna be a big flop. They called it Disney's Folly. But uh, he proved everybody wrong and it funded Disneyland. This is a tree actually from the facade of Snow White's Scary Adventures. And this came out of a Disney authorized wax museum, the Snow White Head. Okay. Behind you are the Disney relics. Uh, this is a piece of oh, skin. Oh, wow. The, uh, the Jungle Cruise. A piece elephant. of elephant skin from Jungle Cruise. That's amazing. This was a commemorative envelope, envelope and stamp that uh, was stamped in Marceline uh, Walt's boyhood home town. These are props from Peter Pan's Flight. Uh, that's the original mold for Captain Hook on the oh, little wow. ship. Fire Smeed. That house is one that you flew over Neverland. Or, I'm sorry, not uh, London. London. Yeah. yeah, you fly over London. Oh, wow. And uh, this chain, that drove the little car effect. Yeah, yeah, it's just the, the moving cars were just chains with, little, with paint on them. Yeah, and that's what that is. Oh, wow. There's an original piece of the witch's costume from Snow White's Scary Adventures. Right. Right here in that little tiny display at the bottom, that little black. Oh, okay. The little little tiny piece of fabric from that costume. It's a rope from uh, King Arthur's carousel, a spike that was given to me by Imagineer, which I'll talk about later, from the railroad. Those are feathers from the Tiki Room. That's a piece of wood from Walt's dreaming tree in his hometown. Oh, wow. That's a brick straight out of Main Street. In the little case behind is a piece of leaded glass that came out of the window that's now part of the Make-A-Wish uh, Cinderella Suite, which I actually got to go see. Oh, you've uh, been yeah, in the... I did a, uh, I did a lecture for uh, Disney management on keeping magic alive by performing magic, and they all I wanted was to see that castle And suite. they let you up there? I got to do it, yeah. There's keys from the parts of the Caribbean. That's an eye from uh, It's a Small World. So that's one of the doll's eyes. Yeah. Oh wow. So the keys, like the keys from like the the scene where the like the jail scene. Those were molded from the same mold that was used for Disneyland and then Disney World. Wow. That is a piece of the trolley track from Main Street. Up here is a light bulb in that triangle case from the uh, electrical parade. 
Okay. And on the back wall is a piece of wallpaper from the Haunted Mansion, from which is my favorite attraction. From the stretch room? Yeah. Oh, wow. And you'll notice in the corner that glass Yeah. on the pillar there. That is called King's Crown, and that was the uh, exact reason why I chose that for the dining room at Magic Mansion. Uh, that's an actual glass that came off the dining room table at the park, at Disney World. The dining table in the... In the ballroom scene. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So that used to actually be part of the... This, oh, uh, that is the original magician that stood in the storefront window of the magic shop at Disneyland when it first opened. Oh, wow. So I think it's cool because as I look at it, I know Walt Disney saw it personally. That's crazy. This is also in the works. So uh, hopefully in the next three months or so, I'll, I'll get it finished. But it'll be a working train layout, HO scale, and uh, all the buildings light, all the rides really ride, a little fountain goes there. The living unicorn is on display. The living unicorn? So, yeah. <laughs> His little horn glows in the black light. And uh, there's the uh, Evanswood Magic Show in the little theater. <laughs> Gotta have that. So through that door is my favorite Disney attraction and so many people love the Haunted Mansion collection. So all these things are mostly the merchandising of the Haunted Mansion. Uh, there's a, a old, from the 60s, an old uh, Halloween costume, the records. And then this is pretty neat. In there is a picture of the ballroom scene. Yeah with the skulls floating out of the pipe organ. Yeah. This is one of the original skulls that floated out of the pipe organ oh, wow. for about 25 years at the Walt Disney Park. Walt Disney World. World. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And then this. This was a gift when I when I did the event for the park. This is an actual costume. You look Magic Kingdom. So this is your your own haunted mansion jacket and then this is the treasure can you tell what that is oh my gosh is that part of a doom buggy it is it's the front of a doom buggy that's crazy so my plan is i think you'll like this oh he's dancing now he's moving oh it was <laughs> creepy so um i'm gonna hinge this where kids can get behind that and get their picture made oh my gosh moving. I keep Every missing, I swear look. he's moving. Every time you look, I keep look at the look at the carpet bag. There, there we go. I actually got evidence on camera that he moves. So if you just zoom down here, you're gonna see the sideshow barker welcoming you to the circus. But guess what? What? You can't go. It's not open yet. It's not open yet. No. That's coming soon also. There'll be a collection of sideshow memorabilia. So um, brand new things if you've been here before, and it's all new if you've never been here. <laughs> I get a little peek of what's going to be in the sideshow section. I got the, that full bodied jackalope there. And I think this is a Wolpertinger, a more elaborate combination of animal parts. A two headed coyote there. A little alien fetus. It's a, va a vampire rat. This is a raccoon fish that I actually found ready-made at a flea market and uh, I think he's great. That is the best thing I've ever seen. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I'm just picturing two <laughs> drunk taxidermists getting together one night. And... This is a saddle that was used by Tom Thumb. Oh my gosh. And it came uh, directly from the collection of the Lobster Boy. Do you remember the Lobster Boy? Grady Styles. Yes, Grady Styles. This, you know what that is? That is a... Uh... A, a devil fish. Yes. And that also came from the, the Lobster Boys collection. By Tiny Cappy, one of the world's smallest horses. Tiny and Cappy. A, Tiny Cappy. Oh, and he's got a, a taxidermy unicorn there. <laughs> and uh, over here is the, the prize possession for me. That's the Merlin Award, which is the equivalent to the Oscar in the world of magic. So uh, my favorite uh, movie when I was really young was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Come with me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that Oofa Loompas. There's bubbles. <laughs> oh, look at him shrugging his shoulders. In the bathtub there. 
And this was a bathroom? <laughs> It still is a working <laughs> Although guests are a little freaked out with moving characters. They're a little I freaked thought out. They should be holding the toilet paper. You know? <laughs> this is a bottle from the fizzy lifting room. That actually like was that was actually used in the movie? Oh, that's crazy. Can I touch it? <laughs> Can we drink it? Well, if we had eight more ingredients, we could float the bottles. That's awesome. Uh, Paris was here, Mike TV. And, uh, and this Oompa Loompa, which uh, his name is Rusty, and uh, he, he was here for uh, the day and came to see the collection. Poster gallery, uh, these are all posters that were in my original museum here in Pigeon Forge. And if you stop right there, I have something very special to show you. I thought this sounded hollow, so I, I took the carpet up, and sure enough, there's like a, a, a trap door here. and. Um, it, there's something under there. No, nope. what's that? <laughs> oh my god! He, his name is Singe. Singe? Yeah, Singe. He is the mascot of Magic Mansion. <laughs> oh no! Oh. So this is one of the guest rooms. It's Egyptian themed. Uh, big fan of Egypt. And the ceiling is done like an Arabian tent oh, kind yeah. of thing. These are some Egyptian treasures. This is the most important piece. That's a Ushabti. Um, that's original, over 3,000 years old. This is the entrance to the Hall of Magic, which starts with my hero, Harry Blackstone. Blackstone, of course, was the first magician that I saw when I was a kid. And this is the original circus costume that Blackstone wore during the finale that was a circus theme. These are a lot of the props that I started off with when I was a kid and some antique collectible magic that is no longer used, but kind of like a magic shop. So this is uh, the Society of American Magicians wand for me. There's a, there's a tradition, much like the honor guard folding the flag mm -hmm. and presenting it to the widow, magicians' magic wands are broken over the, the uh, gravesite to signify the end of their magic on this earthly plane. And this is the most special piece. This is a letter a response from Houdini. A woman had written to him asking if the East Indian rope trick was a fable or if it was real. And it's a detailed letter signed by Houdini. So the backdrops here are from Sweet Fanny Adams Theater, which ran for 40 years in Gatlinburg. It just closed last and year. Unfortunately, they, yeah, they just closed recently. So all of the, uh, the proscenium, the, uh, light, the sconces on the walls, and the backdrops came from that theater. There's 17 seats that was originally the front row of the Magic Beyond Belief Theater where I performed. I did, uh, I did 2,000 hours of stage time at that theater in three years. It was a lot of shows. So when uh, the owners sold that building, I bought the front row and now they're here. So on my opening night, of that show, uh, my mom and dad sat here in one and two, and Mrs. Blackstone, the widow of Harry Blackstone, the first magician, she came in his memory. Hope you enjoyed the tour. You know, when we first got here, it was like we went back in time to Victorian period, and now we're back in time. So thank you for joining me on this tour of the Evanswood Magic Mansion. Uh, such such an amazing uh, attraction. It feels almost feels like a, a attraction custom made for me. Um, I love the uh, the history of the local roadside attractions, local amusement parks, and then some honest to goodness Disney Disney artifacts. There's the new side, the new sideshow section coming soon. Looks super cool. I'm, I'm absolutely promised Harry that I will come back and see the new things that that he's building here in the Magic Mansion. A huge thank you uh, goes out to Terry. Thank you for inviting me to uh, to to take this tour. And uh, it was kind enough to actually let me stay the night here in the Magic Manor. I'm going to be staying, of course. I had my choice between uh, the Titanic suite and the Barnum room. Of course, as cool as the Titanic suite is, I had to go 
with the Barnum Room. So thank you guys so much uh, for joining me um, today. Uh, if you would like to help support this channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Until next time, this one's in the bag.